but at the same there might be more, but so far there's three. Right, Josh, do you know any of the five out of fives? Uh, no, <laughs> but I do know about what's next. It's all go out in Martinborough at the Eco House this week. The essentials are arriving, a water tank, a septic tank, plus we give the owners, Matthias and Sue, a nice surprise. I just want to give him a line for where the um, septic tank can be dug. Yep. So 17, 6, so 7, 10 metres to there and there. But we want to give the digger those ones there for that tank. Yes. So maybe we do that first so he can carry on. We're going to put the, the, the line at the back of the house and so we can dig our septic tank hole. And we've got to be you know, at least three or four metres away from the septic tank so we're not sort of undermining the foundations later on. And the council also have asked us to, to move the house from nine metres to ten metres off the, off the side boundary. So it's changed all our dimensions. 500. Very high tech. <laughs> not waterproof ink though. <laughs> But um, we're good to go. Don't want to go digging the hole in the wrong spot, eh? See, because there's the house. You should be measuring off that boundary from there to there. It's 40. No, that's it's the road, though. Isn't it? It's the road. Is it? Yeah. Dave, we're okay, mate. Yeah, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, yes. in some cultures, women are actually banned from a building site until the house is actually finished. Yeah. And I can see merit in that. <laughs> Listen, to about 2.7. We're in the shit, basically. <laughs> this is a hole for the septic tank. We're just going to level the bottom of it, put some gravel in here, and then high it, uh, hive it into the hole. A lot of diggers, a lot of men, and um, no accidents. So all, all up, it's been a bloody good day. So the system we've put in is a, is a very eco product. It's, a, it's got various chambers in the, and basically as the water from the showers and the toilets and the kitchen sink, all those things go into the septic. That water has to be purified before it's pumped into the, into the irrigation lines. Those irrigation lines are going to feed the trees. Um, you can't spray it on vegetables because you don't want that water on the vegetables. But ultimately you can water all the fruit trees, you can water the shelter belts and that system has to be maintained and comply with the council bylaws. Because this is rural, We've, um, we've got no option but to put a septic tank in. What that should mean is that their rates should be less because obviously you're not using a town supply. Yeah, People might yeah. think of a septic tank as just this big chamber where the number twos go and it stays in there. And that is the septic tank of bygone eras, but that system has to be pumped out. You physically have to get a truck in to pump the effluent away and take it away. Whereas we've got to, as, 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 um, as caretakers of the land, we can't just pump that influent onto the land anymore. So it's treated and then it is dispersed onto the land. So um, yeah, there's no, there's no effluent going into the water table where it can cont contaminate water. It's all very much contained on the site. The beer, this system, it's got solar panels that actually create its own electricity to run its own pumps and it's actually not using a great deal of power. Um, being an eco house and we're, we don't want to use a quarter of our power purely just running a, a, a sewage pump. Dave and I had a bit of a chat after you know some of our earlier footage that Sue and Martius were really, um, were really I wouldn't say upset they, but they were they were um, ha we hadn't ticked all their boxes we we heard that they the wine cellar was a big thing for them and you know Dave and I are going out on a limb we've got to make the numbers work but ultimately we thought well if we're going to build it let's make the wine cellar work if we can. D Dave and I are still working on the numbers but we've put a wine cellar in for you. Really? A real under the ground wine cellar? Underneath the pantry in the um, in the kitchen. That is really great, just yeah. absolutely amazing that's yeah. that's just stunning. I think we're pretty yeah. chuffed about that one aren't we? Definitely yes.
Oh, I mean, yeah. how long have you been beavering away at this, you guys? <laughs> you sneaky little buggers. Yeah. <laughs> By Sue and Marty's putting some hours in, I, th I think it should pan out. But um, like I say, it is an expense. It is an expensive item to put in because it's underground. It's got to be tanked correctly. But um, I think, you know, Sue and Marty's are not, you know, they're, they're really nice people. And I think for the sake of giving them everything on their wish list is, um, is good for them. And it's also good for us for business. Good on you, Darren and Sharon, a wine cellar. What would yeah, we have to do yeah, to get a wine yeah, cellar yeah. out of them? And it's neat that the, the um, clients are getting involved in the build. It's just, I'd like to do it that way myself. No, he's, they're doing a great job. Yeah. That's our show today. Don't forget our book club Christmas mm. stocking, April at choicetv.co.nz. Lots of books there. And tomorrow, just hours before the year's biggest movie premiere, we get to talk to Mark Hadlow in the studio before he gets ready for the red carpet. See you then. Have a great day.